this video tutorial we're going to talk about how to create a client and the first thing we're going to do with regards to that is talk about where you can go to create a client now on this page we have a button in the bottom right that says new client where you can go to create a client overview page there's a new client button here in the quick test window in the calendar when you edit an appointment there's a button there that says new client where you can create a new client in the point of sale when you edit a invoice there's also option to create a new client from there in the projects when you click on the new client project button there's also option there to create a new client so you have very uh, you have numerous options available to you to create from where you create a client the logic being is that you want we want you to be able to create a client in the workflow that fits your needs and not have to go to a certain location so like if you're creating an appointment you can just create a client right there without having to exit back out and go to the this view right here so let's jump into actually creating a new, new client here's the new client window you have a few options here one is you can select the gender if that's of interest of you to track you can enter the business name the first name and last name as you notice right here there are two red dots that indicate that these are required fields however you can optionally put in the business name and leave these two off um, for confusion. To reduce confusion, we just have the little asterisk there to highlight the first and last name as required, but there is that other option. Uh, we have the address, address of the client. We also have the uh, email address, then the different phone numbers, as well as the, uh, you can enter their portal password if you want them to be able to, if you uh, support the portal on your website and want them to be able to log in and, and view their uh, appointment sessions and pay their invoices. We also have a referral thing. This just shows the referral. To actually record the referral, you, referral, you come down here and record where they come from. You have your marketing campaigns, which you have preset up uh, another client, or you could just type in a source for your own tracking. Then uh, we, under more actions, you can generate a, a document template or a contract to be signed or by either our, our cloud forms, these signature options, or by printing off the contract and having them sign them. Um, the document template is also useful for if you want to have a, a information sheet of the client, you can also generate it there. If you want to view the address of the client, you can view it from here, or if you want to get directions from your studio or your business to the uh, client, it will uh, give you directions that, that pre populates the directions there with the address for the business saved in Studio Cloud. In the communication area, you can quickly send an email to a client, send a postcard, or send a text message right from here. Under the create, you have a bunch of different options. So you can create an event or session with the client, do an invoice, a project. Uh, you can also create a new date, such as a uh, birthday or anniversary, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then uh, the rest of these, we'll talk about that when we get to the appropriate tab, the stuff here. The list view, if you do not want your client to be marketed to, you can select this, and this will exclude them from marketing campaigns and other stuff. Um, if you want the client to be a hidden client, or you don't want them to show up in the list, you can do this. This will essentially hide the client, and uh, you have to go to the calendar list and select view hidden clients if you want to see them. Oftentimes, uh, children would be fall into this category, or if you have a couple that comes in and only one of the, you want to track both couples both people in the, in the in the couple but you don't want to record one of them as the, the paying customer and you want to just have the other one there on file you would do a hidden client and then you also have a few different options here you can print the client details um, on a regular printer and this is a pre-built uh, detail breakdown of the client um, if you want to get something more specific you'd want to go create a document template you can print the ad address uh, client details this is a it says it requires a Dymo printer, which is a label printer, um, where you can do like stickers and stuff like that. It's really useful if you are tracking their order of a client and you want to be able to put a label on the client, or sometimes people print off that and stick it on like a, a information sheet and give it to employees so that employee knows which, which client they're working with today. It kind of depends on your business operations and how you run things, to, whether that's applicable. The select the client thumbnail is if you want to have a, a thumbnail of the client, so that you can uh, just have a quick reference. And then notes section here, this is where you can type in notes for the client. If you do phone calls with them and you want to record what happened to the phone call or if they're on the phone right now and you're filling out this new client information sheet from the phone, this is a great place to enter it. The insert button also lets you uh, insert information. So the uh, log, currently I'm logged in as George and then the time and date. 
um, one of the uh, you would often so for example called into uh, request more information and then you have the uh, date and time and then if a different employee comes in here they can add their own notes to it and you, they'd insert it and it'd have uh, well you could do the date the time or the name being the employee and so that would be added there and so that's a, a way that's one method for you to track um, information with regards to what happens with this another one is logbook entries but which isn't that's part of the edit client it's not available when you create a new client right here we have select template and uh, these are pre-built document templates that would populate up here useful if you have a standard format that you follow when creating a new client and you can also make uh, document templates defaulted so that when you open up a new client it will pre-populate their information they're usually used for like a framework so if you have let's say you had a framework that said something like uh, what is the client interested in do they want to call back do they want material sent to them you could have that populated there and then the employee or whoever's filling that out would would know the framework to follow going to relationships these are useful for uh, tracking uh, the relationships and these right here we have pre-built ones that everyone has spouse child parent grandchild grandparent you can go through and change those you can add different relationships if you come down to the create um, button you can create a new relationship type and that a relationship type is like a spouse, a child, a parent, a grandchild, a grandparent. So like if you only tracked weddings, uh, you could create a specific relationship based upon weddings and have that listed here. And uh, this is a, essentially you're creating a, a really quick client by default. They're hidden unless you have that checked right there and then they'll add there. So uh, let's just do an example. John Doe and then we'll do a add them to the client sheet and then they're added there and you can do it the advanced so this is a a uh, one relationship so let's say we had a grandparent here and then uh, that would be that would mean that John Doe was the grandparent of the client and we'll just put um, Bob let's put Jimmy Doe um, so that would mean that Jimmy Doe is the is the client and John Doe is the grandparent in this situation. If you want to go to advanced, you can do a lot more relationships so you can go back and forth and say, okay, you can create a reverse so you can say, okay, then John Doe is the grandchild and this way you can you can do marketing campaigns and say, okay, give me all the grandparents of or give me all the grandchildren. So you can do a lot of advanced stuff using this in marketing campaigns. But uh, some people, it's just uh, it takes a little bit too much time for them to fill out, and so they don't always want to do it. So that's why the basic one is here, so you can enter as fast as possible and not have to spend time tracking down relationships. Organizations, you can double click, you can uh, drag and drop here, whatever you want. You have your list of organizations here. You can also create a brand new organization. Um, if it's on the right side over here, they're part of that organization, and uh, over here is the list of possible organizations. Dates, you have your anniversaries. Let's just say uh, the anniversary right there. And as time goes on, we'll just put one into the future. Or let's, let's go ahead and put it into the year in the past. So you have one year and zero months. As time goes on, you'll be able to see that. And this does show up on the uh, overview page in the birthdays and anniversary section. As well as in the date section right there, you can see a list of people have their an anniversary or birthday. Or, or if you track other stuff too, um, you can add in others. Re these are for reoccurring things that happen every year. Uh, tags, this is where the power really comes into play is with tags. Um, this is where you can track their interests or you can track what they're interested in. So for example, you could track uh, if they're a student, they might be interested in, in special student options. Um, another thing that people like to do is sometimes uh, they want to track where they came from or they work with, uh, for example, school photographers. They want to track Let's create a new tag. They want to track everybody that's part of that school, so I'll just put Springville, and then uh, then you put like uh, 2013. This will give you all the. Uh, I mean, when you add a, this tag to clients, it will give you those clients of the of the school Springville in the year 2013. It's really useful because then you can um, track 
all the all the uh, students from that high school and that, that year and then the next year you can do a Springville 2014 or you can do a Springville uh, fall or 2013 or summer 2013 um, and then so you can chop up the clients and when you import clients into Studio Cloud new clients you can also import them with tags and so you can have this pre-built to have new uh, uh, list of clients that you're importing and the same idea is you can double you can drag and drop or double click to add them to the client tag. So that's a quick overview on how to create a client. And uh, after you've done one of the things that is not here when you create a client is the client number. The client number is generated after you save it. And if you go click and edit the client, the client, the client number is there, and then you can you can uh, view the client number if that's something that you need to view. Um, just refer to our edit client uh, video tutorial if you want to see more of that because it has a lot more details regarding uh, the client history and stuff like that.